I seen a fantastic dog meme. It was obviously this dog had demolished someone's three piece suite. They was just in innards everywhere, oh. and um, someone come in. You could see the face and the speech bubble above, above, above the dog said, um, "Thank God you're home. The couch blew up." <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Dr. Sab Cohen-Hatton, and I'm a neuroscientist specialising in human and animal learning mechanisms. I'm Jamie Penrith, I specialise in canine predatory behaviour, and I'm a former police dog handler. And I'm Danny Wells, I'm a dog trainer, and I specialise in unwanted behaviour. And every week we sit down to talk about the latest research in canine psychology. And more importantly, how you can apply it to your own dog to get to know them a little bit better. Welcome to The Dog Scholar. We've all seen that look, haven't we? When we've come home oh, yeah. and they've ripped up in the bin bag and their ears are back and they're licking a little bit and their tails between their legs. Well, 74% of people think that that is guilt. But what even is guilt and can dogs even feel it? That's what we're going to be discussing today. 74%. 74 that's, that's alarming. 74, yeah. It, it well, is alarming. 13 though, million it? dog owners in the country and 74% of them. That's just in the UK alone. Do the maths. Go 74%. On. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me embarrass you, doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Don't make me do this. <laughs> that is that is that is a popular that is a common belief. Yeah. If I would say, you know, what well, what is it? What is uh, I suppose it's at its most simplest rudimentary form. It's do, knowing that you've done something that you shouldn't have done right. and feeling bad about the consequences of right. that. And, and you're, that's, that's yeah. an internal sort of thing that's going on, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And would you say your own personal experiences, your social capital, if you will, will will affect that? You yeah. know, what, how what I would feel guilty about might not necessarily be what you would feel guilty yeah. about, or likewise, yeah. wouldn't yeah. it? Depends yeah. on the influence you've had in your household, the society you're in, yeah. the area you live in. Yeah, because there's a bit about how does this then reflect on me, and have I damaged my own, yeah. um, you know, my own standing with people that I care about, with people that. I care about what they think about yeah, yeah. me. In this one study, people had to read sentences about themselves that were designed to make them feel guilty while they were in a brain scanner. So if you break the rules, you feel bad about it, mm -hmm. right? And they were finding parts of the brain lighting up that were related to that. So patients with damage in those parts of the brain, that showed reduced guilt and compassion, and they found it harder to adjust their behavior to be socially appropriate. So guilt and that kind of socially appropriate bit of your brain are linked. Now, there was this one guy called Phineas Gage. He was a construction worker on the, on the railroad and he had an accident with some TNT and a tamping rod which basically kind of went up through his eye and came out the other side of his skull so it destroyed most of his frontal lobe although he survived miraculously don't ask me how he completely changed his personality it wasn't like it was him anymore he behaved in a way that was really socially inappropriate had no inhibitions whatsoever would swear all the time whereas before sounds like me nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's what happens yeah. when you give Danny TNT in a yeah. camping pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> done the scar yeah. really well. He used to be yeah. a priest. So then, yeah. So. So. Yeah. <laughs> So if you damage that part of the brain, that idea of how to behave in a way that's socially acceptable pretty much disappears. But that's also associated with guilt. I might feel guilty if I lost my temper with a friend, for example, but if that friend had kicked my dog first, I'd feel absolutely no guilt yeah, whatsoever. And I'd, just, yeah, and yeah. I'd probably have one less friend as well, to be honest with you. One but, less shoe, one to be yeah. right up their ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guilt depends on the order of events as well and whether or not your response justifies whatever's just happened. So the way that you feel about a moral sentiment, your emotion, is overlaid with a much more mm. abstract concept of social values, which are also dependent on the order of things happening. So there's a lot going on in yeah. our brains when we're experiencing guilt, right? It's not, it's not a simple thing. So there's a lot going on in humans when we feel guilty. And it's interesting to know whether dogs have got the same, even brain architecture that would allow them to do mm -hmm. that. Guilt means you need to hold a negative emotion. And we know dogs can definitely do yeah. that, right? but also simultaneously hold that abstract concept of the social rules and how what you've done, your understanding of your own actions, and how that's then violated the social Without rules. it actually violating yeah. in a physical sense. And I've done a huge scan of the literature and I can't find any research that suggests that dogs have got the kind of brain architecture, the actual machinery within their brains to allow them to experience that. Yet we're a science-led society and 74% of people think yeah. that that's true anyway. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, because it's what it looks like. It's yeah, the right. experience. And we would see, if a person did that, I'd be really put out if I came home and one of my mates had been in my kitchen and chucked my bin bag around the place, yeah. you know? But yeah. you, so... You've got weird mates. <laughs> <laughs> one chucks your bin and bag around. And <laughs> One kicks your dog and the other one chucks your I bin mean, bag I, around. I'd be a bit alarmed if one of them took it out and put it in the bin outside. I'd be like, why have you done that? <laughs> weird. <laughs> Yeah. On circles, he makes yeah. sense. He's done something to my bin and he's took a shit in that bin. Why has he, why has he took it out? <laughs> it's quite refreshing, to be honest, that, you know, when we when we bring up the, um, the literature, the science on it, because it always kind of falls in line with what we'd perceive anyway through training and how and working out how, how we're going to make associations and how dogs learn, doesn't it? And there was this one study, actually, that, that kind of looked at that. And they looked at whether dogs' guilty looks when someone walks in and they catch them in the act, for example, were actually just a response to the way that humans react and some forbidden food was left in a room with a dog while the owner left i love that idea forbidden, forbidden food. food what is it i don't know what would be forbidden food an apple this forbidden food i don't think it was a granny smith i don't think <laughs> the barn back then. Yeah. i love granny smiths they're my yeah. favorite apple we digress yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks jamie we're gonna go with i like a pear <laughs> <laughs> so this Forbidden food, yeah. let's go with cheese, yeah. was left in a room with the dog while the owner left. Either the experimenter would take the food with the owner out of the room so they couldn't see what was happening, or they would leave it to see what the dog did, whether the dog would eat it or not. But whichever way, the owner wouldn't know. So if the owner came back in and the food wasn't there, they'd have no way of knowing whether the dog took it or the experimenter took it or whatever. They would just come in and they would see the food has gone, but my dog is still there. Now, when the owners were called back in, they were told not to interact with their dog, not to react, not to do anything, come in blank and just observe the dog. And then they were asked whether they thought that the dog had eaten the food or not. Now, based solely on the way their dogs greeted them, the, the look on their dogs, owners couldn't correctly judge that their dogs had eaten the forbidden food more often than you'd expect by chance. Mm -hmm. They couldn't tell. I completely, did, I completely, did, I completely did, Were they aware of the that fact one? that it could have been the fact that somebody else had removed yes. the food? Or, right, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so it okay. could have been the dog, it could have been something else. They got no idea how the food had disappeared. I'd have guessed that outcome. You would have guessed that outcome, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Dogs are amazing interspecies communicators and they're reading you all the time. So if 74% of people think dogs can feel guilt, they're actually going to react like their dogs are guilty. Our society is forever moving towards making a comparison of dogs with children. And if your child would have done something like that, you'd be the first thing, what have you done? You know, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I see a lot of this with, with pet owners coming in. You know, they genuinely believe their dog knows right from wrong and is is just had a, a lapse in understanding in that moment, but realizes that he shouldn't have done it. And it's just simply not the case. Your dog doesn't have an understanding of what's happened in the past and feeling, you know, remorse towards that. Your dog's simply going off your reaction and what follows, you know, your eyebrows down or mm. your stern stance is normally a verbal scolding or maybe a physical punishment. Well, like, like you were saying then, Sav, that, you know, they're brilliant yeah. uh, readers of body language yeah. and subtle cues between yeah. species and things like that. But because we can't actually appreciate how good they are, it's very easy, like you say, that sort yeah. of like anthropomorphic, you yeah, know, you're, yeah. you're basically the same as me, but you're just furry yeah, or yeah. not. Or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I look like so, a yeti so, when I don't go to the waxes. Yeah. Yeah. This concept of right and wrong, uh, as far as human social norms are concerned, and morality, mm -hmm. you know, and that way of thinking, and the consequences of my action, you know, and how they might impact on somebody else's emotion. You know, a, 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 rather than just yeah. the environment. If I do this, does that happen? Yeah. Do I get this? You know, I, I completely understand why 74% of people would think that because it's natural. Oh, you are, you are going to walk yeah. in and think, oh, man, you know better than that. You wouldn't do that if I were here or something yeah. like that without yeah, actually yeah. realising. In the days when I used to do a lot of home visits before I had the training centre, I had that same thing, um, a dog that was going through the bin. So we resolved that, but the owner, I, I had to really convince the owner that the dog has no guilt towards that, that event, it doesn't understand. And I said, you, what you're doing is you're chipping away at the relationship with your dog, you're putting your dog through stress and you don't realize it. And she was like, well, what do you mean? I went, okay, so I'm willing to bet, you know, you, you, you're gonna be a very stern stance, you're gonna storm around and you'd use like a stern voice. I said, I can't even remember what I said, told her to say to me, but I said, just walk into the living room where the dog is in that same way and say anything to me, something like, have you bought the sausages, whatever, and straight away the dog's 
lip licking and turning away. I said, you see? I said, that's the same reaction you're going to see from the bin. So put that into context. You've just had a bad call with work and things aren't going well. You storm around the house and now your dog's on eggshells because it doesn't know what's yeah. going to follow. It's important that you understand this in order to have a better relationship with your dog. Yeah, and I think that's really true because as we saw in this study, that guilty look that the dogs had, it wasn't driven by their actions. No. You know, it was driven by the expectation of how their owners would respond when they saw those triggers because of the look mm -hmm. on their face. So dogs are associative learners. So unless you've literally caught them within one and a half seconds of the act, they've got no idea why you're angry. They just know that you're angry. You haven't taught it anything, but there's a good chance that you've confused the dog. If if I do like this and drop my ears down and sort of like baby face myself and tuck my tail and lower my body and everything like that, I know that that switches you off. I know that it changes yeah, yeah. that behaviour into another behaviour. So yeah. that's what I'm going to do. But we perceive yeah. that as being, you know, an awareness of yeah. a wrongdoing. What would be really interesting, I don't know whether they've done it, Sab, but is if you brought in somebody who wasn't the dog's owner um, or somebody who walked into the room who didn't yeah. care mm. whether something had been stolen, something had been eaten, and whether the dog would project yeah. the same or whether they would interpret the behaviour of the dog as being the yeah. same way. If I walked in and I didn't know that there was food in the room yeah. and I didn't know that somebody might have taken it or the dog might have taken it, would I then look at the dog as I entered the room and thought, there's a guilty dog? Yeah. Or do you know what I mean? How much of it is the actual owner themselves that's walking in there preloaded, yeah. you know, and also what's the owner's past experience with those dogs? Have they actually caught yeah, the yeah. dogs and thought it's guilt before yeah, I took part yeah. in this research? And, and the know? other the other side of it is the, the prolonged, um, you know, suppressed body language. It's the dog's saviour as well, because even though they've just been scolded, if they keep that posture going sooner or later, they're going to get, oh, come here, it's OK. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've got a sustained period of time where the dog's under unnecessary stress. Yeah trying to look for a way out of that stress, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The neural machinery that dogs have got, the way that their brains are wired, I mean, there's a load of similarities to humans, which is great, but there's also a lot of differences. And the complexity that we experience the world with is not the same that dogs have got. So it's not fair to believe or to assume that your dog is gonna feel guilty about something. It's not fair to assume that the dog is going to know necessarily. And as a comparator, a dog's ability to reason is about the equivalent to a two to three year old yeah. human child. Not so, watching, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's really easy, isn't it, for us to go in and think, well, if I ripped the bin bag open, exactly. I would be in the wrong. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. then we expect that of our dogs. But I can understand completely because it's the most kind of intuitive thing to go, oh, you know what you've done wrong, especially when they're kind of displaying those behaviours. Because the behaviours that we perceive as, gu as guilty are also yeah. the same behaviours that are associated with fear or yeah. submission. So the dog is bowing down yeah. because they've looked at your face, they've read your face, they've associated that with you being angry, with being scolded, and then they're, they're saying, oh no, oh no, it's coming, please don't, please don't. Yeah. And so there you have it, they're associative learners. They're not experiencing guilt, they're experiencing you. Yeah. You know, there's quite a lot of myths in dog training today that, you know, if you correct an unwanted behaviour, then you're going to ruin the relationship that you have with your dog. But the reality of it is, if if you're not actually delivering any sort of learning outcome within 0.5 of a second, then your dog's not going to retain a lesson from it. So if you're not creating those lessons, what you're actually doing is just verbally scolding your dog and your dog has no idea why that's happening. You're actually chipping away at the relationship by not addressing the issue yeah. to begin with. Because well, for those two points to be linked, for those two things to be linked, they have to happen in a, in a really close space in time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you only need to look at, you know, naturally, naturally occurring events in the animal kingdom a young dog chases towards a cat. The cat's running away, the dog thinks, oh, that's going to be a fantastic thing, I'll chase after that. And within a moment of the dog getting too close, the cat turns around and hisses or swipes out, and whoa, lesson learned, I keep away. Yeah. You know, nothing particularly negative has happened to me, but an event, the environment, life has shown that there is a consequence to that behavior. And yeah. because it's linked at that moment in time, the dog understands, you know, what it is. It's a really good, good point, because if the on. cat swiped it half an hour later while the dog was sitting down in yeah. its bed, it's yes. not going to associate chasing it with the thing that's oh, going to exactly. get it. Exactly, uh, get the wrong cat with my cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a really <laughs> mean a cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Cat's got but that's the same disorder. thing, isn't it? You know, the dog's ripped the bin bag open.
open, you come in and you're cross. The dog doesn't realise you're cross because the bin bag's ripped open. The dog just thinks you're cross because right. you've walked in. If and as the bin yeah. bag is ripped open, a siren immediately goes off inside yeah. the torn bin bag once it's open. And I think, whoa, whoa, whoa bad bin bag. If it happened on each bin bag, whoa. Yeah, yeah. This guilt aspect of it doesn't have to be linked to a singular event, you know, like raiding the bin bag or, you know, jumping up and nicking food off the side or whatever it happens to be, stealing things. But it can cross over into your training as well. So it's very easy for people to think a dog is guilty of not complying with a given instruction yeah, because in one context you can do it. You know, you sit in the living room for a biscuit or for praise or whatever, you'll do it in the back garden. You won't do it here. Why aren't you doing it here? And rather than actually understanding, this is something that I, and I know you will as well, Danny, talk a lot, mm. you know, with, with clients and owners about is the fact, again, it's that attributing human capacity to take a concept and be able to generalize it. So if you yeah. were to say to me, Jamie, sit on that chair there, and I understand sit on that chair there, and you then took me outside and said, sit over there. I don't need a great deal of generalization because we share the same you know, understanding of a language anyway, and I can understand that you're directing me towards something that means perform the same action with that, as I do with this, whereas with dogs, that isn't the yeah. same, you know, you yeah. so you need to be able to show them. So it's very easy for people, very commonplace as well, for people to be able to put a dog into a setting that they don't understand because they haven't had that same sort of training, learning mm. experience in there. But for us to expect and, you know, uh, require that behavior and perceive it as, uh, you know, uh, the dog choosing not to do it. Yeah. You know, when we're asking them As to do it. And just, and it's yeah, not. right. And yeah. justifying that. Yeah. You're guilty by not doing what you know you should do. Therefore, that justifies my... You yeah. know, my actions towards you, whatever it might be, shunning mm. you or yeah. whatever. I think adding to that as well is a concept that we call overshadowing. As dogs learn, it's not concrete, but generally speaking, <laughs> if you put a verbal command with a physical action, then the dog is more likely to take on board the physical action than the verbal command. And where people go wrong when they're going at it by themselves, so to speak, they're pairing it unknowingly. They're saying down, down, down. And, and putting then, their hand down. And putting their hand so down the at the same time. What so the dog the takes the down as the, the the physical cue rather than the verbal command. Now you're in a different environment with your friends and you go, oh, watch what he does, down, and you don't do the physical command. Yeah, yeah. The dog now doesn't understand what you want. Now you get frustrated and start down, down. Your vocal tone changes. Now you've got the crushed ears and the suppressed mm. posture. It's, it's all or understanding how your dog learns and how it, how their minds work. It all aids towards having a much better relationship with your dog and having a happier dog as well. Yeah. Really brilliant point. Even just, well, re just, you, just recently, because <laughs> yeah. you are... I caught myself on that very, very thing. And, and I've tried to develop the habit. But even now, you know, I can see something where I think... Inside, I think, leave it. But inside, I think... Mm. Yeah. But then when I think about it, I think the right hand came up instead of the left hand. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you've got a whistle in this hand and this, so you've yeah. changed the context a little bit, which is enough to throw the picture for the dog. And it would be so easy mm. to, to, to get cross, yeah. you know, because mm, yeah. that's what, or, or to get frustrated or, yeah, do you know what, yeah. to lose heart. Yeah. It's really, really uh, important to be it able is. to grasp that. And this concept. is why dog trainers video the work. When I was training Brody for a working trial, it required, um, terminal commands from a distance and I've, re I've recorded it just for me just I was going to post it and what I realized is every time I gave him a command of stand from a down I was do I was nodding my head up I was going stand stand and true as a city yeah I stopped it and he didn't stand I had to I had to break it down and build it back up again he didn't understand the stand he was watching my head to lift up at a distance yeah. so you know we're all guilty of it yeah. and it's very important you know video and how you're interacting with your dog will massively age you in we don't think enough sometimes about what the dog is seeing you know what's the world from their perspective you know so your dog is by your knees usually well depending on which dog it is if it's jimmy it might be closer to your ankles but, yeah. <laughs> but you know their world view is where your leg is yeah. how example. easy is it yeah. to apply your human yeah. interpretation of it Very, and say yeah. you know you're choosing not to do that yeah. because and, and that and that you know I, I am dog. yeah I'm stamping guilt upon you for, for knowing what you should be doing but yeah. you but you're choosing not to do it and part of it is human frustration yeah. isn't yeah, it because right. yeah, yeah. you know they can do it so of course it's going to feel frustrating when they're not doing what you think that they know they should be doing even though you don't realise that they don't realise that they shouldn't mm. be doing it. So really, they're not actually guilty. They're not guilty of, of anything. Right. Yeah. In every instance, barring you know, um, some kind of dog that perhaps isn't doesn't have the. I'm going to steal some words from you, sir. Sab with neural architecture, neural Love scaffolding, it. or whatever. Love like, it. I'm learning. I'm rubbing I'm up learning. on you. Oh, I'm a sponge. Yeah. I'm a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> but where, where you? I'm not. I'm a flannel. <laughs> <laughs> but you're our favourite flannel.
But I think, you know... A you, scented you, flannel. You, you, you can... Um, I'm trying to be serious. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I just think, it's, I think it's, it's so easy. It's so easy to make that mistake. The mistake is ours. The yeah. mistake is ours of being... Uh, it really of, is. You know, burdening a dog with, uh, you know, cognitive processes or whatever. Mm. Complex cognitive processes that they simply... Just just quickly, I, there's something I made a note of before that I want to br bring back in. We were talking about like dogs being destructive in the house. Dissection is a big part of the predatory cycle. And sometimes dogs can be a little bit more genetically predisposed to certain aspects, whether it be chase or whether it be dissection. If you acknowledge that your dog is quite genetically prone towards dissecting things, you're going to have to start managing your dog because you, you, you're not really going to get that out of your dog if it's really genetically instilled in your dog. You, you're always going to find a situation where, you, where your dog, you're going to come home and your dog's going to shred it something to bits. So avoid that if you've recognised that that is in it. There's also a condition called pica in dogs where they start to want to ingest like foreign objects. So I, I, I had a, um, a Malinois with it and it cost me two and a half thousand pounds in the vets before we even knew he had it. No matter what you put in with him, he will eat it and consume it. Wow. Again, consumption's part of the predatory cycle. So these are things that to be aware of as a pet owner, if this is a reoccurring event or you've allowed it to be practiced, you might struggle stopping that, so you might have to manage it. Did I ever tell you how Jimmy Chew got his name? No. He chewed up a pair of Alexander McQueen shoes. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Dissecting. Completely yeah. dissecting. Dissecting. He completely yeah, yeah. dissected. But he wasn't guilty. I was he so wasn't guilty. Sorry. I didn't know that. No. He just went in and sort no. of like said, that's okay. No, right? I wasn't cross with him. I was yeah. cross with myself for leaving them out. Yeah, but blame Mike. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point, though. It's a good yeah. point that you made, isn't it? With the predatory sequence yeah. and looking at things, you know, dogs chasing after the vacuum cleaner or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. part of a predatory sequence. I'm dissecting, I'm yeah. shredding, you know, when yeah. dogs are, dogs are yeah. pulling bark off sticks you know yeah. i'm literally yeah. tearing the meat from the bone that evolutionary yeah, basis yeah. for behaviors that we would think they've got a thing for this particular item or whatever it's bringing a joy that's going to give them massive genetic fulfillment that yeah. you're just not going to be able to compete with so acknowledge it and put a stop to it straight away it gets quite hard to even feel cross about something like that when it's what your dog is hardwired to do yeah you're just finding alternative outlets for an innate behavior yeah. that you're pre-programmed to do yeah you know yeah. there's no sort of like malice in there there's no there's yeah. no challenge it's just yeah. it's what i am it's what i do you yeah. wouldn't be you know in any way concerned or take it personally if your goldfish blew yeah. bubbles it's funny because you see quite a lot of videos online don't you of people kind of trying to make their dogs look like they're guilty of doing mm. something and i think sometimes it really perpetuates yeah, yeah, yeah. that it myth, really does I, I reckon you, you could do a, an entire podcast episode on in its own right on social media yeah, yeah. you know presentations representations of mm. dogs because and the and potential the reach of the really potential yeah for, for how that can impact negatively a lot of time negatively you know where people walk in what have you done like that and dogs yeah. holding down and it's likes 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 followers 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 you know yeah. and as you say perpetuating people really that really myth. really pushing resource garden yeah, yeah. it's all over the internet yeah pushing, like, creep into the dog, and, it, and everyone's like, no, isn't it funny? No, it's not funny. No, yeah. none yeah. of it's funny. None yeah. of it's none funny. Of it's funny. Yeah, great. Right, welcome back. We've got some practical tips for you. What can we practically do when a dog has done something that we don't want it to do? Never mind the fact that they're not feeling guilty. They've done something that we wished they hadn't done. What can we do about that? Well, Sab, we've already established that dogs are associative learners. So unless you've literally caught them in the act, then you're best just taking a deep breath, moving on and living to fight another day, so to speak. And I think that applies in any sense, you know, yeah. if you're going to be rewarding the dog for doing something, you want to see more of it, or, you know, if you if you think, oh, well, is it worth me sort of like leading you away from that and yeah. gi giving you a cold shoulder or whatever yeah. it happens to be, you know? Like you say, the timing's important. Yeah. Not bringing in after, way after the event and expecting the dog to form any sort of association of any benefit to either you or them and and also you know if you've got a dog that's doing these things repeatedly constantly ripping your bin up or destroying things in the house you can be in your own behavioral habits of just losing your temper so it's important to remember that you know try and give yourself a pinch and say the dog has no idea why i'm angry it just knows that i'm angry so is there a way then that you can really take the time to make sure the dogs understand the behavior well fa first and foremost management's important you know these behaviors only happen because you're letting your dogs have too much freedom 
long before you've explored how they are genetically put together. If you live with your dog and you've put them into a structured routine for the best part of 12 months, you generally know how your dog's gonna behave. You'll give them things to chew on in the crate and if they're not really interested in them, they're probably not really interested in dissecting full stop. So you can, you can massively reduce any of these behaviors happening by simple management as soon as you've got your dog from start to finish. If you've got a dog that's already got these problems, then you're gonna to have to start setting up behavioral outcomes for the dog. You know, actually look at it, what did he do? What did I do? Yeah. Often, often- What did Mike do? What did Mike do? <laughs> I was miles away. I was miles away, I was doing, doing something incredibly important that had nothing to do with this, mm. but, I'm, but I'm guilty. But I think, you know, I think often it's difficult for people to actually acknowledge and to accept the fact that the problem's ours, you know, the mistake was ours. A big part of him, destructive behavior in the house is created by people's misunderstanding of having a dog. You know, we're going to get a dog. Great. When are we getting the dog? This date. Okay. Let's go to a pet shop and buy them loads of toys and loads of balls and all these things. And what you do is then you leave your dog in a world where they're practicing dissecting objects. And then when they get bored with those objects, they start on the objects that you don't want them to <laughs> dissect. So again, toys, even, even leaving toys willy nilly for your dog. For you Americans, that just means as and when they feel. Um, <laughs> um, just leaving, leaving toys out for the dog to indulge in as and when they feel. You actually devalue the toy. If you have toys and the toy is a, a representation of we are going to interact, we're going to have a game. You, 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 again, you're, you're valuable to your dog now. People do tend to just leave the toys with the dog so the dog can play with the toy. Yeah. Because it's kind of what you do with a child, isn't it? You'd leave the toy mm -hmm. with the child. So sometimes things that we do really naturally to our children, we end up doing to our dogs, but our dogs aren't children. We it's, have yeah, to respect it's, them it's another myth. Are. It's another myth as well that you're seeing from puppies right the way through to people taking dogs from rescues. They, they think that their dog constantly needs to be occupied, but if you take anything away from today, Take away that the most important thing you will ever teach a dog is the ability to switch off and do nothing. Just relax in your environment. You know, when we're sat on the couch watching a bit of telly, we don't need to run around the house or throw the cushions about. You just relax. I do. And some, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you do. But sometimes, you know, sometimes if you've got a dog that's got a little bit more about them in terms of genetics and they're a little bit more, you know, primitive, let's say, they wanna, they wanna chew things, they wanna do things, then you're gonna have to take that into consideration and make the reasonable adjustments f to cater for that dog. Yeah, I so think that's really So would good it be point. fair to say then, so if we're dealing with, you know, guilty dogs, our dogs able to feel guilt? Well, whether they're able to feel it or not, because you can't actually ask them, but let's just say that we don't think that they can, that we agree that they they don't necessarily have that neural architecture. Yeah, <laughs> like it. Love I'm it. it to me. Jay. <laughs> that, that neural architecture to be able to form those sort of like, you know, complex, uh, emotions or thought processes. Yeah. So the best way to deal with that is to make sure that you are that you recognise what your dog is, that you understand natural yeah. behaviour patterns that they're going to uh, perhaps perform, that you see that if something happens, that is what mm -hmm. you're seeing, and that you take steps to be able to train them, you know, yeah. to be able to uh, and manage situations properly the, so that they're... You know, the reality of the situation is, you know, when you're choosing a partner, you wouldn't go on a date and then move someone in your house and trust them with your children or anything. You get to know them and see what are they about, what do they like, what do they not like, are we going to get on, are we compatible? The same sort of thought needs to be given with your dog before you just let that apex predator loose in your house. Take the time to get to know your dog, see how they tick, where, 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 where is the potential for bad habits? What kind of behaviors am I really gonna enjoy and, and what am I gonna work on? These basic concepts are gonna make you make the world a difference to how you live with your dog. That's such a good point. They are apex predators. An yeah. apex predator is essentially an animal that doesn't have another animal that is going to seek it as prey. Yeah. They're at the yeah. top of their food chain. Us. Us, yeah, yeah, us. Yeah. No, but they are. They're at the top of their food chain. And we forget sometimes that a dog is a canid. And because we bring them into our homes and we mm -hmm. make them part of our family, and of course we do. I treat my dogs like they're family members, fully fledged family members. Luther's got his own chair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Used to be Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mike. He's got his own car. Yeah. 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 Used to be Mike's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but we do. We bring them in. Be managing a watch next. <laughs> <laughs> they're part of the family aren't yeah, they yeah. so it is really easy to think yeah. that your dog can feel the same emotions that you do because you bring them in and you love them like right. that but i think it's so important to respect them for the incredible creatures that they are you know yeah. they are just so amazing when you look at dogs and you compare them to the rest of the animals in the animal world dogs can do things that no other animal can 
they've got specific parts of their brain that they use to read faces, to recognize faces. We before only thought that that was primates and humans that could do that. So no wonder they come in and they're looking at your face. And even if you're just looking a little bit cross, you haven't even started telling them off yet. They can see the way that your face is changing and they're reading that. They've already made those associations because in the past, that event, your furrowed brow, has been linked with you shouting at your dog, you mm -hmm. getting frustrated and cross with your dog. They're just incredible. And I think the more that we can appreciate dogs for the canids that they are, the better yeah. we can cultivate and that relationship. And if you really understand your dog and you treat them like a dog, you will have the best friend you could ever wish for. Pearson's best friend. Absolutely. Well I, I, just, Hashtag just, gender just, just, I think there'll be a lot of people that are listening or a lot of people that are watching this that that might themselves feel guilty about the fact that they've perceived their dog as being guilty. Yeah. And they may have Absolutely. had, in fact, there's probably millions. Oh my Do you God, know we've what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're, we're all we're fallible no human beings. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think a sort of like, well, hopefully, the ability yeah. to grasp an understanding of, okay, you know, okay, so maybe I've, I've made a bit of a mess yeah. up here, but. There's so many people that want to make pet owners feel horrible about themselves and guilty, but you'd have to understand, you know, we're all fallible human beings yeah. and dogs are, if there's one thing from all the years of working with dogs I'll give, and I'm pretty sure you'll agree, Jamie, is dogs are so resilient. We could all learn something from dogs. You'll never see a dog like, dragging on for the rest of the day because they stood on a plug. They just get on, they just get on with it. So what my point I'm making is, don't don't kick yourself that you've you've kind of misunderstood your dog a little bit. Just make the amendments move on and your dog will move on with you. Mm. Absolutely agree with you. Yeah, Absolutely there is something about forgiveness with dogs yeah, as well. So, yeah. you know, where we might hold a grudge, the, do the dogs aren't in the same headspace as no. that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I think we can all relate to a time where we might have been a bit cross with our dogs for doing something and you look back and think, oh, I wish I hadn't responded like that. I was out of order then because it wasn't the dog's fault. That was my fault. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And if you if you know that that's why, you know, you know that you've, well, like you say, yeah. I'm a fallible human being. We're, we all are. But, yeah. okay, I recognise that perhaps yeah. maybe you can't actually think and that you, way. Maybe yeah. it is the timing was a bit off. You know, maybe you are reading me on, on you know, yeah. based on past experiences. You're still probably going to think, oh, the pin bag, you know, yeah. whatever, my chocolates or something like that. <laughs> yeah, a little but, tip. Make a little agreement with yourself that if, if you're in this habit of, of blaming your dog and thinking that your dog understands, every time you do that and you catch yourself doing it, make sure that you make up for that and do something positive with your dog. If your dog likes to go for a, take them for a walk then or go in the garden, play ball with the dog, give yourself a positive outcome as a punishment to yourself and yes. you'll soon start being aware. <laughs> That's isn't it? a yeah. good one. Yeah. That's a good one. And without trying to be too self-helpy, it's not too bad an idea either. Is If you do walk in on something, you think, oh, you know, yeah. it looks like a... You know, like an earthquake just site or something just like that. Just check that's just... dog related, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. The kid's guilty. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you, if you do, they share it. They share <laughs> No get out there. But I do think, you know, like, just take it take it a minute to think. <sighs> yeah. Right, you know, yeah. Take it just yeah. I remember, I had, a, I had I had it sort of like... I love for them to comment in because they watch this, but I had a residential Malinois in called Jerry who had severe separation anxiety. And I come down one morning, and not only did they broke out the crate, he demolished my kitchen, opened the freezer, smashed up everything in the freezer, never ate nothing, and took a massive steaming shit in the middle of it. <gasps> and when I walked in, he literally gave me a look that I can only describe as, quick, quick, look what I've done, look what I've done. <laughs> no, and I just went, <laughs> cleaned it up, start again. Do you know what I mean? What's the point? What's the yeah, point? Yeah, because it's happened in the middle of the night. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <gasps> Sounds like student yeah. dorms. I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, I think it's time for some uh, listeners' questions, isn't it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. My dog takes her balls and drops them in a pond in our garden, then barks until we come and fish them out for her, only to immediately put them back in the pond again. <laughs> I'm sure she knows exactly what she's doing. Why is she like this? Danny, come on, why is my dog dropping her balls in my pond? Well, basically, your dog's training you to play the best game that she's found in that garden. And what is that <laughs> yeah, game? Yeah. What is that game? I'm going to drop me balls in the pond, get them out, and I'm going to do it again. It sounds yeah. phenomenal. Because there's nothing Let's better play. than soggy balls. Let's play. <laughs> who's the dog and who's the owner? Yeah. Let's go for it. To be fair, at least it's your pond. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. My pond's tiny, yeah. so what does that tell you? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, okay. there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, that's a byproduct of leaving 
balls around and, and giving your dog a lot of freedom. Your dog sounds like might have been a little bit bored and has worked out that if I drop that ball in there, you get it and the cycle continues and Absolutely. the dog just finds joy in it. Absolutely. It yeah. doesn't really need to be anything more no. or anything deeper if it's than a that. Problem, if, it's a, if it's a problem for you, then you need to look to rectify it. But other than that, it's pretty innocent. What I would say is be very careful leaving your dogs unattended around ponds because they grow in. What's that green stuff they grow over algae. in? Algae. Like, um, is it algae? Pondweed. Pondweed. Uh. It's not so bad if they've got steps or they have an embankment, but this one had a bit of a ledge with it, um, with brick around it, so there's no way you, the dog's getting out of there. Just be aware of that. You're a ball launcher. Okay, should we go on to the second question? Well, this the second question. question was actually the most asked question, Jamie. And I can see why. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, question two. Brace yourselves, folks. Why do some dogs like eating poo? And we're going to go to Jamie for this one because he has an overwhelming knowledge of dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> he talks enough. He talks enough. Here, he? Why does a coprophagia? Coprophagia is the term that we would use to describe yeah. uh, the ingestion of feces. Why do dogs do it? Danny, give me your first answer as to why a dog will do it, and I'll come back onto it. Okay, yeah. Sometimes it can be um, a, a nutritional problem. They're, they're lacking in a, in, a, in a nutrient. It can just be habitual, can't it? Um, again, sometimes they can just find joy in it, and sometimes they can be uh, malnourished. Sab, any other ideas as to why that might be? Because it's a better alternative than my cooking. <laughs> yeah, that's why Mike eats it. Oh, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so we could be saying that it's a, a nutritional deficiency, it's a malnourishment, it could be something that, that stems from early experience, early exposure, yeah. so dogs that have been yeah. raised in a particularly barren environment. Or, if, you've, or if you're not paying attention to them in crates and they're leaving their, in, living in their own mess, um, if you're not feeding puppies regular, like the four meals a day, they can start filling in the gaps and it becomes a habit very quickly. Right, and just, yeah. a, just a habit formation of something to, something to do. Yeah. Top and bottom of it is, the actual real answer that I would give is we don't know. Yeah. There is no absolute definite answer on to why a dog eats poo. And that doesn't matter whether you ask veterinarians, it doesn't matter whether you ask dog trainers, it doesn't matter whether you ask scientists. Nobody yeah. can actually say for sure because there are so many potential yeah reasons for that behavior taking place, a lot of them having yeah. very sound, haven't they, very sound mm. sort of like uh, justification behind them, yeah. others a little bit more sort yeah. of like, you know, far-fetched. But I, I tell you now, um, I can sp I've had both. I've had a dog that eats its own yeah. uh, I have. poo as soon and as I've had it... one that follows the others around the garden eating yeah. theirs. Yeah. That, as Eli. soon as it would come out, it wouldn't It wouldn't eat it if it was cold, but if it came out and it was vile as it sounds, if it came <laughs> yeah. out and it was warm, if you weren't there quickly enough, yeah. bang, it's gone. It would eat a cold, Ming, that? <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. Yeah. You've got standards. Yeah. Yeah. You've got standards yeah. in put it in the microwave, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 real, the real question they want is how do we resolve it, isn't it? And for whatever reason, you know, Two dogs might do the same behavior for very different reasons, but the, the root cause of it is they find value in doing it. So the dog has to then understand that there's no value in it anymore. The, the first point to call would be stopping the dog from practicing the behavior. If you're leaving your dog unattended in the garden, then you're leaving them opportunity to do their business and consume it. If you're not really taking them out of the crate regularly, then they're going to do the same thing again. And if you leave them to wander around the house and they're doing the same thing there. I've also had a suspect that dogs can do it when they've been really, really verbally, like, or physically punished and verbally scolded for, um, for doing accidents in the house. And while we're on that subject, I'll always say an accident in the house is always a person problem, never a dog problem. There's another guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Issue, isn't it's it? always you know, a person problem. If your dog's having accidents in the house, you fail to manage that environment or you fail to keep an eye on your dog before they've been house trained. But well over 90% in my estimation of the dogs that I work with will eat any yeah. kind of feces that yeah. happen to be lying around, yeah. particularly fox. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, beautiful, beautiful, yeah, beautiful, beautiful over the fox. Isn't that yeah. lovely? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Luther uh, likes to yeah. roll <laughs> around. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't need to be in the countryside yeah. to know the smell of that. But, you know, they'll just ingest it over the over or in, in preference to the high value food rewards yeah. that the owner happens to have with them. Yeah, I, just... I think it's because of the way that we respond because I think they just like seeing disgust on yeah, our faces. Maybe, maybe that's some kind of humorous guilty. thing. Yeah. They're guilty. So, of it. Watch this. He's saying <laughs> yeah. to all his dog mates, Luther saying to Red and Jimmy, hey, watch what <laughs> happens now. An another one, <laughs> another, another thing to be aware of, you know, I've got nothing to, to back this up, but it's just an observation. Eat, consuming feces is one of the earliest things that your dog will be subjected to witness. The, their mothers clean up after them all the time That's when they're whelping. That's a really good point. So it, it, could, it, can be, it can be, the idea of it could be there from a very, very young age as soon as their eyes are open. So, it, it, you know, again, management when you've got a puppy, not allowing them to get into habits of, of messing in their crates or around the house, that is your way to stop that from ever happening. Mm. And I, th I think, 
again coming back to the various different sort of like uh, justifications for it or explanations for it and that evolutionary advantage of keeping the den area clean yeah, yeah, you know yeah. to be able to keep competitors away or not be aware of the fact perhaps that you know that that, that the young um cubs pups or whatever happen to be there you know and and yeah. therefore sort of like protecting your own food source your own areas and things like that there's loads of different answers yeah. i think as well um danny no doubt you'd say if it's something that has just started or has just begun with your dog you know or you've taken a dog on um who you don't know anything about whatever then certainly a vet trip yeah. has got to be mm, has got to be your number call. one yeah get in there make sure that there's absolutely nothing that is clearly yeah you know not lacking uh, in anything yeah. yeah and generally it isn't you know yeah. generally it isn't but it's obviously a, a very responsible step to take in the first place but then yeah perhaps not concerning yourself so much with the whys and the wherefores but how am i going to prevent it from happening so you know? as disgusting as eating poo is we've got a section on dog ick so we can talk about some more oh. disgusting stuff can't we so this section Close of the out, show looks yeah. at the icks that people have in relation to their dog so what absolute fountain of grossness do you have for me today gentlemen not as gross as you might think it's more along the lines of the, the subject matter guilt so yeah we've got it we've got a few of them here so we've got uh, nikki from never wallop i'll say that again <laughs> never wallop i always get to laugh i don't know why but it's funny because we're charming. yeah here it is people who bad mouth dog owners because they're not training the dog as they see they should train their dog what works for one dog will might not necessarily work for another dog and anyone trying to adopt a generalized approach to dog training doesn't really know what they're talking about. Dogs should be trained as from a dog-centered approach, treating your dog as an individual and recognizing their individual needs. Please do not make people feel guilty because whatever they're choosing to do for their particular dog, please acknowledge that they are spending time with that dog and they are putting the time into training that dog. Respect people's choices, that's all I'd say on that matter. Yeah, we don't know enough about everybody, do you? You know, no. you, don't, you don't know somebody's individual circumstances, yeah, you don't know their journey, you yeah. don't know. And at the end of the day, is it yours? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is it your dog that you're dealing with? As long as the animal isn't suffering and as long as the person, you know, isn't doing things where you think, you know, this is unnecessarily, you know, prolonging a difficult journey that you're having with that dog, yeah. shut your mouth, yeah, leave, yeah. Them be, leave them crack be, crack on with yeah. your own dogs. Yeah. And if you know better, do better yeah. and away you go. Yeah, that's it, 100%. There is something, isn't there, about there's going to be multiple ways to achieve an outcome. Yeah. And whichever, out, whichever way you're going to choose is going to depend on that dog, it's going to depend on the history, it's going to depend on the owner and the relationship that they have. And there are multiple ways to achieve it. And I think sometimes maybe people feel bad because they don't understand it. And so it's easier just to reject it than take the time to understand it. Yeah. But that's a really good one, actually. Mm, yeah. There is something just about being patient and about being respectful. 100%. Right, let's move on. Okay, What's next? I'll fire this one to you, Jay. We've got Grace and she's from Sheepy Manga. Of course she is. <laughs> people who say their dogs can do what they want because they're dogs and that's what dogs do. So, so it's, this is something that somebody's ick is that doesn't like people who say they can do it, so it's just what yeah, dogs do. Yeah, I think they're getting that. more like, you know, your, your dog can do what you want. Why, why is your dog dragging you down the street? It can do what line? it wants. Yeah, well, where do you draw the line? My, my, yeah, my, my, my initial point on that would be where, where do you draw the line? Yeah. Dogs do plenty of things that yeah. they'd like to do. You know, if you're going to give this sort of like autonomy yeah. to just practice whatever what your genetics you, yeah, say, what your whatever, whatever you happen to do say, yeah. the, the very fact that we have a lead in our collar or a harness or whatever it happens to be attached to you yeah. simply flies in the face of that doesn't well, it dogs have succeeded evolu in evolutionary terms living alongside human social groups and that means they've behaved in a way they do things within that group that is adaptive yeah. so dogs don't necessarily just go and do whatever dogs do to be successful yeah. in that if they were going to go and do whatever dogs do they're going to yeah. chase us and they're going to bite no us no species and get to do what they humans want humans wouldn't yeah. allow the dogs to live in the social mm. group so there is something about of course the dogs are going to do dog things but if you want them to successfully live in a modern human society it's up to us yeah. to teach them. i think we're all in agreeing yeah. to agree here good that is a bit of a yeah. good yeah. Yeah. Okay. well done um, and we'll fire this one to sab this is from um Connor from Piddle Valley. Of course he is. Of course he is. I love, I love, I love, I love beautiful play. He's just put dogs walking their owners. Yeah, I mean, you'd see that and then people get really frustrated with their dogs. So again, you should know what to do. You, yeah, why are yeah. you dragging me or down again, the street? again, slipping on the ice. Yeah, but again, it's about teaching your dog what to do and how to behave and how, yeah. how to do the behaviour that you're expecting yeah. of them. Everything's fine until you've had a bad day. You might be, yeah, he's fine, I don't mind him pulling me. But now you've just had an absolute bollocking in work. You've had murder at home and you've gone, I'm taking the dog for a walk and now he's pulled you and you've slipped over ice. Now you're kicking off and displacing your bad day onto your dog. Again, 
believing that your dog understands what he should be doing because you're, you're all heightened in the heat of the moment. And isn't it, isn't it a sort of a thing where it's um, important as well to recognise, you know, is if I want to walk my dog and they pull me along a little bit, bah, big hook. You know, if I want to walk my dog and they're a problematic dog to other people, to other members of society, to other animals, yeah. etc., then we're talking about something different. So again, Absolutely. it's about the individuality. Great of questions, though, and great icks. How can people get in touch with us, Jamie? Okay, so if you'd like to get in touch, you can find us on the at Dog Scholar podcast on social media, or you can email podcast at thedogscholar.com. And do write in. We love your questions. They're so Absolutely good, they? fantastic. They're so good, yeah, brilliant. Well, that is all we have time for this week, I'm afraid. But if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. And if they don't like it, maybe their dogs will. And finally, over to you again, Danny, for the final thought. OK, so to summarise, dogs do not understand the complexities of guilt. So the next time you arrive home to find that your dog's eating the biscuits off the side, don't lose your temper with them. He's probably done you a favour. See you next week.